concept, uh, a friend, a very good friend of mine, his name is Edouard Constant. He is Haitian. Uh, he and I met seven years ago when he was actually being educated here in the States. The Ridgewood AM Rotary Club, of which I'm a part of, actually uh, founded a boys' orphanage in 1999, officially. So they've been 10 years in the business. They now have 800 children and a budget of 150000 a month. But they don't take in girls. Three years ago, Edward and his wife, June, found a young baby boy lying on the side of the road. And when families can't afford their children or they're sick, they leave them in the woods to die. They're, get eat, they eat, they're eaten by the dogs. They're eaten by the insects. Uh, it's not a very nice way to die. Um, they happen to find this boy. They don't know how long he'd been living in the woods by himself. <clears throat> Uh, near dead, with kidney failure on the side of the road. June being a nurse and a midwife, she picked him up, took him to the hospital. They paid for his care, got him treated, uh, and six months later, took him as their own. And it was that incident that <coughs> led Eddie and June to start a girls' orphanage. There are many, many, many boys' orphanages around Haiti. There are an estimated one million orphan and Restavec children, and Restavecs are child slaves. There's one child slave in approximately every 10 or 11 homes in Haiti. That's about 10% of the population of the country, which is about the size of Maryland. Uh, however, there are more boys orphanages because the girls have a tendency to take the sexual abuse better at the house that they're enslaved at, rather than to take that abuse on the streets. Now, on the streets, they can only go into one form of business, and that's typically prostitution. And that can be as early as 12 years old. So to avoid that, they stay in the home. So what we decided to do three years ago is we were going to start a home. It's called Constellation Center. It is only for girls. And we actually buy back Restavec girls from their owners. And you're going to ask how much. It can be as little as 80 bucks. It can be as much as $250. That's all it costs to buy a child back. It costs more to buy a cow than it does to buy a child in Haiti. A cow is about $1,000. So I can get four kids for 1000 bucks, or I can, get a, I can get a nice effort. So we decided that girls would be, because of the lack of girls centers, we decided girls center would be the best way to go. So we started designing it. We started raising money, this is privately, to um, to buy some land. On the back of the brochure, you'll see some of the land that we've purchased is currently in yellow. The second half is two and a half acres. It's above where you see the container housing, which is very unique. Um, that two and a half acres, my wife and I bought in uh, February so that we could live there, I could live there permanently. Um, and that may be, a, well, it's a goal of mine at some point down the road. It's not going to be in my immediate future because my wife says there's no way I'm going to live in Haiti. But I would. Um, but we are going to build a house there, and it'll be a place that I can uh, I can stay while I'm there, and we'll turn it into a guest house so people can come from the states and all over the world, our, our donors, and and stay with the girls at the orphanage. Uh, so we started designing it three years ago, and exactly one year ago, November the 9th, we went down and set the first container. And there's some photos inside uh, on the right hand side of the inside spread. Uh, you'll see uh, construction of the container. These are typical shipping containers, 40-foot shipping containers. We put a roof over them, an A-frame made of steel. We cut windows and doors in them. We put rebar on the windows for security. We locked the doors. And we put a thatch roof over top. And you'll be surprised, a 40-foot steel container, which houses 12 girls, is an average 20 degrees cooler inside than it is outside. The ventilation, the 12-mile-an-hour uh, crosswind that always comes through country, the trade wind, uh, and the fact we have a thatched roof painted white and we have proper ventilation, uh, it really keeps it cool for the girls. So we came up with this concept. We laid the first container one year ago. We stayed for nine days. We actually got two containers completely cut and set on blocks. And then we left. We thought, okay, we're going to come back in a couple of months. And they were living nicely in a little house in town. Uh, then the earthquake hit, January the 12th, and all hell broke loose. Uh, the population in Kai, the third largest city where we are in the south, we're on the southern tier, there's 1.4 million people in the southern tier, <coughs> was inundated from, it went, the population went from 80,000 to 140,000 in, in 14 days. 
all the people from, that were fleeing Port-au-Prince, the injured, the sick, the dying, you name it, all flooded into Kai. And um, it just overwhelmed the girls. And it became, traffic became so bad in the city, we had to move them out to the country to bring them into a safer spot. So we moved them. As soon as the owners saw the white guy, they jacked their rent up to $2,400 a year, which used to, used to be $1,200 a year. We couldn't, we didn't have the money for it. We were trying to feed at that time 12 girls. And we just said, forget it. So we moved them into a temporary spot closer to an orphanage, and we finally bought the land. Um, and from that, as I said, you know, having the earthquake and the population almost of a million children being either enslaved or orphaned, the demand just grew. So we have actually grown since then to 30. Our max for this budget, or for our budget this year rather, is 32 girls. Um, it costs about $25 a day to feed our 30 girls. It's pretty cheap. Um, housing is a little more expensive, but we buy the land, we manage it ourselves, we do all the construction ourselves, it's all done through volunteers. We do pay locals in the community for some of the work when we're not there. I went, I spent two months after the earthquake from January the 19th until March the 31st when my wife said, if you don't come home, you're not going to have a home to come home to. So I ended my stay, but I have been back and I go back regularly for 10 to 12 to 14 days, just about every month to six weeks, just to check up on the progress and check up on construction and to bring a pocket full of money. Um, wire transfers don't work. Haiti is the old way. It's very corrupt. Uh, the best way to get money to the country is to bring it and strap it to your body and, and bring it with you. And I, on average, go with 10, 20, 30 grand in my pocket. The government in the U.S. doesn't like that, but uh, the Haitian government doesn't care. Um, you can send a wire transfer. Soja Bank is the largest bank, for example. I sent a $2,000 transfer. They can't find the money. 